Welcome ladies and gentlemen, and today we are going to begin our next playthrough. And as you can probably gather from the title of this video, it is for Super Mario Bros. 2. Now as you guys are well aware of, Super Mario Bros. 2 is considered the black sheep in the Mario franchise. Unfortunately, I think it's unjustly criticized. I think when you take the game as a whole, and you pretend that the first one didn't exist, it's a really good game. It has a lot of fun factor to it, has a lot of replay value to it, and I think overall, it's relatively well polished. But people find fault with pretty much anything that isn't like the original, and therein lies the problem. Um, the original Super Mario Brothers. A lot of people say it wasn't released in the United States because it was too hard. and. It's actually, that's not true at all. Uh, maybe it had a little bit of a factor into it, but it wasn't the main reason. The main reason was because the feedback from Japan was that the original Super Mario Bros. 2 was too much like the original. That's why Super Mario Bros. 2 is such a large deviation from it. Um, but what are you going to do? I had actually just recently watched the newest... Uh, AVGN episode, and I was really disappointed. Uh, once again, I think Zelda 2 becomes the target of unjust criticism as well. Uh, maybe just as much as Mario 2, because I think they're both very solid games if they were removed from the predecessor. Uh, and the complaints for Zelda 2 are just pathetic, honestly. I think as, as far as the game goes, what, what his criticism was, was really lame. Um, you know, complaining that the townspeople don't necessarily tell you useful information. Um, show me an RPG, really, where the townspeople will tell you something useful. It just doesn't happen. The only ones that I could think of right now that, that would be the exception and not the rule would be something like Earthbound, where the developers really put in a huge amount of effort um, to make everybody meaningful and, and almost have their own separate life. Um, you know, that that's, like I said, it's an exception, not a rule. Even great RPGs like Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger, um, the townspeople aren't all useful. In fact, most of them aren't, and they tell you a bunch of crap too. Okay, they don't tell you their name is Error, or they don't say, I cannot help you, or some other useless bullshit, but they're still, you know, whatever. Um, you know, his other criticism was the fact that, okay, they don't, um, how do you know to get into the sixth palace? Well, I'll tell you how you know, and if you were actually playing the game and talking to townspeople, you would know that one of them tells you to toot the flute at Three-Eyed Rock. Um, and another one of his complaints is, how do you know to use spell at the end of the town? Uh, the hidden town there. Well, because the woman in the town, I'm pretty sure it's where you get the, um, it's either by a fountain or it's the one where you get the magic jar from, um, tells you to use the word of power at town's end or town's end, something like that. Um, that's how you know. And when you, if you paid attention, which you should be when you're playing a game, you would know that, um, um, when you got the magic spell, the wizard said something about, I give you this word of power or something like that. So the clues are all there. I mean, okay, they didn't come out and say, here, blow the whistle here. I mean, that would be kind of redundant, you know. Then you complain that the game was, was too easy. It just tells you it, you know. Oh, stop being so cryptic. You know, isn't that part of what makes action adventure or RPG games fun? Is the fact that they don't necessarily tell you exactly what to do, but they give you clues that lead up to it. Um, you know, I thought that's what was fun about it, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, could you imagine in Phantasmagoria if I just, I just sat there and, and was like, oh, yeah, um, what do I do? I talk to the Hintmaster all fucking day long? I mean, that would be boring. It'd be stupid. So, I, I don't think that the criticism is really very good. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the fourth mushroom is really hard to get. Well, it's not hard to get. Well, it is kind of for me. But it's up here. You got, you got to actually uh, hop back across here. And this is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. This is where Luigi would come in handy because he uh, 
has the gift of uh, high jump, but I, I like the princess. I actually hate Luigi. I think he sucks. There we go. There we got him all. So, but this is the last. Each level only has uh, three areas, so this is the last one. So. Having four hearts probably in this level alone is the most important out of all of them. So anyway, that's that's my, my complaint. I, I just think that that was possibly out of like the 120 episodes or whatever he's done. I actually think that was possibly the worst one. Because I, I just think his criticisms were being over complaining. Even with, with um, Castlevania 2, I mean obviously the game isn't finished. You know, and I'm not saying that that's an excuse, but it's still, I, I still like the game, you know? I, I think the whole invisible block thing, you know, just adds another element. But you know what? The guys that in Zelda games, and you know what's so funny in, uh, shit, I can't remember the game that he reviewed, but he said something about in a good game, you can see what walls you can bomb. And he, he shows an example of Zelda, uh, A Link to the Past. And that's not true, because in the original Zelda, you couldn't tell that the walls could be bombed. Not at all. You just had to know that they, they were bombed. So, you know, even some of his information is just wrong. So I guess the first Zelda isn't good, according to him. I guess maybe that's it. You know. And I realize that a lot of what he's doing is because, you know, you want views or whatever, you want money. <laughs> People pay your bills, you know? But I just think, especially in the case of Zelda 2, he's being really overcritical. By the way, this is a boss. This is Mauser. I guess I should have explained that. Uh, he's actually you fight him twice in the game, you know? But these guys, a lot of this game, the enemies in this game, were actually taken... They were also showcasing that Super Mario Brothers cartoon. It was like a combination between the first and the second here. But this game also comes under a lot of heavy criticism, and I think it's fine. I don't think it's a bad game at all. Again, I think sometimes people just complain to complain. And this game isn't hard either. Like Zelda 2, I understand that a lot of people complain because it's too hard. It's, it's a hard game. And when you're younger, you know what? Hard games suck. They all suck. It doesn't matter how great the game really is. But if it's hard, it sucks. We've all been there. We all know. You know, I, I'm not lying or anything like that. When you were younger, you were like, oh, this game fucking sucks. Like the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, perfect example of a game that gets a bad reputation. Rightfully so, because, you know, it cheats. But, <laughs> it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Even he blew that game out of control, but I realize it's all comedy and all, and, and a lot of it is funny, but, you know, it's not hard. You know, he was like blowing through that damn level, and I mean, yeah, you got two minutes to do it, but you can get through there and, and not take a single hit the entire time. Um, whatever. But anyway, this is why I use Toad in level 2. Because you gotta pick all this crap up, and, and he picks it up so much quicker than uh, some of the other people. If, if a lot faster than, like, the Princess or Luigi. He's really slow. But I, I think he's just as fast as the Princess because they both have, like, really good specials with the fact that one floats and one jumps really super high. You gotta be careful here. I've jumped in that hole so many times back in the day. But I, I, I think a lot about um, music kind of has a, a parallel a little bit to the gaming industry uh, to some degree with um, you know some game uh, musicians some of their music may not be as well received later on um, as some of their earlier works. Um, the best like mainstream example I could give of that would be um, Metallica. I would say would be a really good example of that. Where um, early on they were really good and people loved them, but later on nobody loved them. 
Well, none of their older fans liked any of their newer stuff. But a lot of their newer fans liked their old stuff. It's kind of kind of weird. And I mean, when you're thinking about something from a marketing standpoint, that's not bad, you know? But you want to retain your older customers if you can. And, and I think even with Metallica, yeah, that's great. Give me the freaking Starman now. Although I guess that's not so bad. Um, I think a lot of the criticism with some of Metallica's stuff was a little harsh. You know, a lot of people said that uh, Injustice for All was a bad album. I thought it was decent. I mean, it, 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 there was no wow factor to it, but it, it wasn't awful. I thought the Black Album was really poorly received. I actually thought that was better than Injustice for All, actually. Um, a lot of people always ask me what, what music I listen to. I listen to a lot of uh, European power metal and a lot of uh, progressive metal. Not much mainstream. Um, the most mainstream, if I could call it mainstream, would probably be uh, Dragon Force. Be as mainstream as I get. And I don't know that I would... Now I think they're, they're a lot more popular than they were originally, but... That was pretty sweet. But when I first started listening to them, it was with Valley of the Damned, and nobody knew who they were then. Now they've been blown up to the point where they're like, you know, Uber. Well, they're, they're not, though. They're, they're not Uber, but... They're, they're like music I listen to when I'm playing World of Warcraft. I'm a big uh, Dream Theater fan, if you guys know who they are. I also like uh, Symphony X. It's really good. Uh, who else do I listen to? Like, I listen to Camelot, although I, I like their older stuff better than most of their new stuff. I really wasn't a big fan of the Black Halo. I really didn't like uh, Ghost Opera at all. Um, I think Roy Khan, the lead singer of Camelot, has such an amazing voice, and in some aspects I think he limits himself, uh, to what he's singing. You know, you go back to some of their really good ones like Fourth Legacy or, uh, Karma or Epica. I think it was Epica, I think that's what it was called. Epica's also a group, and I'm not really into that style of music. Um, although Nightwish is okay. Um, but I'm not really a big fan of that Epica thing. I don't know where this fucking thing is. I think it's like over here somewhere. Ah, I know where it was. It was up top here. It's supposed to go over here. I wonder if I can get up there. Probably not any... Okay, Bezo. I need one like my height. Yeah, there we go. Nothing so bad. Oh. How am I supposed to get uh, to do a little baby jump? I'm gonna make a view. I almost missed that one. That would really suck. Missing this in uh, a boss stage would really suck. Especially with all these freaking Bezos flying around, man. They'll mess you up faster than you could ever dream. Uh, you know, forget it. Well, maybe I shouldn't have forgotten it. Whole bunch of crap here. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, with my luck, I'd end up with a uh, Starman. Oh, fucking bitch. Fucking tweeter, get the fuck out of here, bitch. This one sucks, because this one, you really, you gotta blow through this. And, uh, you gotta get a key, obviously. Get away from this freaking shy guy. Oh, you tricked me, you son of a bitch. Okay, stop going whichever way I'm going. Here, I'll go this way. You stay the fuck over there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm getting, like, attacked by, like, a billion of these guys. Let's kill them all. Sweet. Um, which way would the... Be. Probably not the way I went. Oh. Sweet. Ooh. End of video.